listening to it came from the radio, you know this is Dr. Feldy, and I'm here and blessed and lucky to be with Gordon Shoemaker Fox with the director of Wild Eyed and Wicked Movie. I, I just viewed, whoa, what a movie, and Michael Summers. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks huh. for having me. Now, first question, could you just briefly tell our viewers what this film you created is all about? Sure, I can jump in for that. It's all about... Um... About it's about a uh, becoming a knight in the modern day. Which you have had one on one your demons out in the woods. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, and now I'm gonna go right to the end of the movie actually because this is my perception, which is the unique one. I found that communication, reconnecting, eliminating isolation, and teamwork eliminated this soul sucking, hope destroying demon. I guess I'll call it. Is this a metaphor for earth pain or? Earth plane, real life happenings, or Absolutely. is this exactly how one should go about defeating actual demons? <laughs> both, you know, both. Absolutely both. Because, you know, what is an actual demon if not uh, everything you say? That leads me to my next question. Does someone in the crew or cast or the writer believe in demons, demonology, supernatural? Uh, oh, plenty of things supernatural. Absolutely. Um, what an interesting question. One always loves to talk more about ghosts, right? Um, you know, I think that in my experience, the the idea of you know of of the demonic supernatural forces are fortunately something I've never had experience with. I know that there is, uh, you know, all sorts of unseen and uh, things out there that sometimes can be felt. And uh, I like to focus on those, the good ones or the mysterious ones out there. But, you know, maybe uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe there is more out there uh, also on the dark side of the coin. Hope not. A lot, a lot of the times if somebody asks a question like that, uh, doctor, um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself that I sort of go back to the the question. And there's an assumed thing that if, if it's if it's standing next to you in the flesh, that that's real. And if it's not standing next to you in the flesh, that it's not real. And I don't, I don't agree with that. Like, like mm -hmm. maybe something that's, that's in, first, first of all, maybe it does stand there in the flesh next to me. <laughs> Second of all, uh, the thing that's in my mind that I'm worried about might affect me or even hurt me or assault me even more than like the, a demon in the flesh. Sure. Because what like physical violence is like, don't, don't don't hit someone it's better it's much better to give them psychological emotional abuse which will linger for the rest of their lives rather than the uh the the fleeting hurt of a slap on the cheek <laughs> that that is true that is true well said well said and your acting was phenomenal could i just just ask how how did you become such a brilliant actor <clears throat> oh, not a question brilliant. on my list but i just have to ask that Oh, well, that is very kind of you to say. Um, I, th Amazing. I think for me, it's, uh, it's, it's becoming, okay, I will confess, this came from Lakeith Stanfield. I was, I watched him in a movie the other night and, and he was in a movie with me and, and I, I, he's maybe my favorite actor right now. And, and he said, well, it's just about improving yourself. And what he, and what I see when I watch him act is what I hope I'm doing. I see him like incredibly open to hearing what he's the other character saying to him, meaning he doesn't have a preconception about what's going to happen and what the actor should put on that. He's just like open to what might it feel like in the moment and is listening really well. And that's the same as a good human, in my opinion. Kind of like Bruce Lee says, the most flexible man in the room is the strongest man in the room. So if you're able to oh. take care of your own business, then on set, you can be like, all right, I'm ready. I'm open. I don't have my baggage from home. I left that at the door. I don't know. Is that part of your process? Oh, absolutely. And then like from the Bruce Lee point of view, anybody who's attacking you, no matter what their strength or their technique is, if you're flexible, you can combat it. I like that. Right. Well, it's working. It's working. So now we're getting to the production. 
Now, even though I'm a doctor, well, I started as a dentist, but this is about you. I have worked on a lot of film sets and, uh, well, this is about you. So now, question. Now, there's a lot of scenes that are in the dark. Now, were there a lot of blackout blinds to keep the light out or night shoots? And how did you guys stay awake? Were there any supplements, tips and tricks that the cast and crew used to stay awake and fire on all cylinders to shoot in the dark? Sure. Napping. Yeah, napping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hit those naps. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, absolutely. So there, there, there were 16 days of shooting um, that, and you split up into sort of three three weeks with two day breaks in between um, that final set of six days. Uh, I want to save the six. I'm going to say five of them were overnight. So you kind of do all of your, you know, all through the night shoots at once. Um, so you get, you do adjust uh, a bit and um, to that. Uh, I mean, staying awake, just caffeine, you know, usually there's that 3 a.m., 4 a.m. like lull, which, you know, for me, directing it it was like i that that was the one thing i could absolutely like well a couple of things i could ever do one of the absolute things i could never do was if i'm falling asleep and you know then like then the whole thing falls asleep so i had to stay kind of wired uh which led to some fun things which my you know my producer patrick he likes to get ridiculous things like you know c4 starburst flavor and all these like wild thing you know have some of that yeah yeah you know, i remember one time uh, like when I, I I went to get like a, a caffeinated drink at like 4 a.m. in the the woods, and the only caffeinated drinks left they were um, uh, they were like spicy Mountain Dew. I was like, God damn it, Patrick! <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask this. I I knew it. I knew it because I you know I've been on sets and people live off Celsius now. But anyway, all right, back to now the meat and potatoes. Now, okay. Lily discovers a box of notes her mother kept and concludes that she's part of a generational curse, specifically like a monster, evil creature with yellow eyes that fed off her and her mother and her ancestors, maybe her ancestors, ancestors, maybe before the Big Bang. We don't even know when it started. What are your thoughts on passing down trauma or demons from parent to child? Sure. Actual demons or trauma, anything really, or genetic predispositions, you know, heart, heart failure, whatever. Or what do you think, Michael? You you have better demon answers than I do. My 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 answer is is I'm I'm difficult this way. My answer is almost always the reverse. How do you stop it? It's it's less about how to keep it going than how to stop it. And that's a more difficult question. I mean, because the abusive father who who hits his son, well, it's pretty common for that son to hit his son and and his wife and you know all of these things. But how do you stop it? That's a a good question. And uh, I, I think it's one that's been in our culture pretty strongly lately, which which is a good thing. And a lot of it is about you acknowledge it. First, mm -hmm. that's the first step you acknowledge it. And that's almost, in my opinion, when I'm working on my personal demons, it's almost it's sort of the ongoing step. But in the last step, too, in a way, it's like, oh, there you are. Mm -hmm. There you are, personal demon. Just sit over in the corner, please. Don't bother me. I see you, but I'm going to ignore you. You know, it's so weird because, you know, I, I've acted in my younger days, too. You know, I'm, I'm no way. Seven, 70 years old. I look pretty damn good. But my younger Dude. years, I, I acted. And it's people always thought I was the character. So now I see you kind of all down for most of the film. It's you're so gregarious and it's just so fun to see a different persona and people, you know, society often believes that you are the character you play. Have you felt yeah. that that people oh. say they think you're going to be just like you with the characters? Oh, oh, abs absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's funny, even the people in the industry do that because all of a sudden you, you do well in one part and then you're playing in that one one part the whole time he's like well actually i came for at this from comedy so you know like i'm the depressed father that's what i'm going to be playing for the right exactly i'm picking up a comedy vibe i've done some therapy in my days and i've done stand-up comedy so i'm like i can see you on stage doing all types of clown stuff so anyway all right let's go switch gears so now Long question. Lily is finally faced with this wild-eyed demonic creature one night, and it scares her, and her girlfriend invites her to a party in New York City. She could have easily fled the scene, surrendered in fear, like I've done many a time. Whew. But instead, she decides to not hide, take the offensive route, and pursue a fight that she intends to win with this demon. Why fight? Why does the character fight? Why does she decide to sharpen her tools, literally, and fight evil instead of giving up? How, how come? 
Sure. Well, you know, the first thing is that we see it's been ruining her life, you know, and she's has been running. She has been running for it for most of her life. Uh, and she's sick of it. You know, that That's the core of the story. She's sick of it. Like, I don't want to live this way. I don't want this to keep ruining my my work, my friendships, my relationships. Uh, and that's the fun of Wild Eyed and Wicked. That's the, the 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 blood and iron and fun of Wild Eyed and Wicked is you know let's uh, let's do Hereditary with Joan of Arc. Let's you know have someone fight back. Mm -hmm. Would you mind? You could say no. Sharing any situations where you stood up and fought when you had the chance to give up and maybe just lose the battle or run from it. Oh my! What an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I'm sure I have an answer, but the the it's almost such a fascinating question. I kind of it almost stuns me. It's like, yeah, there there have been little things here, here and there in life. Sure, I I'm fortunate. I perhaps never had something super massive. You know, uh, mm -hmm. my wife certainly has, most certainly has. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but no, I, I definitely. Tr I think one you always have that question of when you're confronting something is like, what's the best thing to do? Is it to, you know, uh, will will the situation be improved by you know a front-on uh confrontation or right. or is the situation best improved by you know just kind of you know maybe building boundaries and just doing the best you can to um you know find better communication it depends depends but definitely something as fun and direct as this um for me not necessarily something with so much iron and steel but uh my wife's a little different though. <laughs> I had some, had, I had some yeah. demons in my life that I had some demons that I decided it, I'm done, man. This is it's it's time to fight back, and it's the the mm -hmm. thing that Gordon said about you being tired was a big part of it. the The demons were uh were addiction, and they and they came together. It's just people like you can't be addicted to marijuana. I'm like, yeah, maybe you can. <laughs> oh, you can. I, yeah. <laughs> And I had this constant question in my head, which is, oh, when am I going to smoke my next bowl or what or whatever? And, and, there. and that question haunted me like I'm smoking a bowl and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, but how much longer can I hold out before my next one? I'm like, why? You, even now you're like and the the way to confront that demon was I, I said, well, the answer has to be never. And uh, never. and so that was my way to to fight it was to try and stand up and because smoking the bowl was putting it off and that's exactly what I was doing I was in an unhappy situation and I was just smoking it to be oblivious watching tv smoking pot right. let it let it putting it off until tomorrow well I'm sick of this right. let's do it now I have to say well I have to just say this I guess a little personal I was watching this film now I've actually had I have multiple stalkers <laughs> in my younger years. It, it reminds me of my younger years. Uh, I actually had someone, uh, I, I think, who's murdered people uh, scare me away from stand-up comedy. And I'm looking back and watching this film yesterday. I'm kind of feeling, mm -hmm. I'm brought back to that place. And I'm thinking, oh, I just feel like a victim. But when I saw the end of the film, it was it really surprised me. I kind of thought these were humdrum. They're going to go through and play the victim. Oh, what a boring movie these people are just losers you know they're not going to do anything but then they they totally surprised me and they took the offensive and they beat this demon and I'm just like wow I you know it, it just motivates me to more face things that scare me rather than cower actually I had to quit stand-up comedy I was too afraid to go on stage I thought this murderer would show up to my shows so I cowered in fear and I'm ah. like you know what I wish I got up and I fought because look what happened look how things ended everyone was smiling and she has her girlfriend there and it was all about communication and teamwork and facing your fears not uh putting it off and smoking a joint and just disappearing so i think it's very motivated inspiring film so now let's go on to the next film we only have about a few questions because i got to get you out of here now let's say she's lily is talking about this mysterious creature that she has to battle and she says i need someone to believe me and to see what I see, is this supposed to also be a metaphor for real yeah, that, that was a question I, that, that line I wrestled with a lot. I wrestled with that line a lot um, because, you know, Love it's it. it's kind of at the, the center of the question of the, at the center of this film is a father daughter relationship. This film is like, that is the, the absolute core um, skeleton of all of this. 
and in so many ways um uh it really is you know it's 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 two main characters you know clearly lily is our great heroine but it's very much two main characters and a big question for the dad uh for for gregory is you know how much do i what what is the line between buying into something that might be a delusion i think is hurting someone versus what is the correct amount of just being there to be like i'm here to listen i'm here to support i mean that's and that's mm -hmm. the a critical exploration because that's something ultimately that i don't come out of this film and even life with like a very direct this is the answer to all situations it's definitely like an exploration of what is that line um and i think greg goes through that in this film Hmm. And I found this, it's interesting. I found this just as, this is more of a comment than a question. You know, we go in and I actually wrote this question out. I'll read it to you. But I, by the time I finished the film, I didn't agree with it. And I threw it out because I too was tricked because you think that the dad is a POS, you know, just garbage guy. And I'm, that's what you think before you watch the whole movie. So it's a really good lesson um, to show the viewer that, don't judge don't judge people you know you might think someone's the bad guy but really it was the woman who was haunted and the dad was trying his best but you really i thought he was a bad guy and i was like i hate this guy i can't say it but by the end i freaking loved him so here's a question <laughs> i disagree with so this is totally threw it out all right in one scene the daughter speaks what's truthful to her pointing out that her father treats women nowadays better than he treated her own mom and he says don't don't make me regret inviting you here and he shuts down while his daughter's truth is involuntarily pointed out to him so my question was some parents push things under the rug while they think face the facts and deal with their kids failings but you know what that totally changed because you gotta watch the movie which leads me to the end um i found this movie quite inspiring as i already said any final thoughts for our listeners? Anything on your mind today you'd like to share? Free fall question. Well, I I'm just thinking about your your recent comments, and I just that's what it was on my mind. It, it's yeah. like um, we're asking that uh, Lily is is looking for someone to believe in her, and and I'm and I'm and that's I think my big conflict is the father is Gregory is, it, but I'm thinking to myself. But it's not believable. There's a demon attacking our family out in the forest. It's not believable. And then to me, I have this uh, thought in my head, well, is that important? Is, is like my preconception of what reality is, is that important? Is, is, is it what's important as a father is to be like, well, what you have stated is a believable fact versus my daughter. And I think that's mm -hmm. why I become... Uh, redeemed is I, I side with my daughter. Wow, oh, right. And I I really grew to like you, which was which was really heartwarming for me. I know it's just a movie, but sometimes movies can actually have emotional effects. And this movie uh, did. And so a lot of times I'm really separated. I'm very detached, especially as a doctor, but not, not this. All right, you guys got to get out of here. Can you please tell our listeners and viewers your websites, your socials, and where to find you? Absolutely. Uh, June 11th will be uh, anywhere you can rent something. But again, you can pre-order us on uh, Apple TV or get a physical copy on Amazon or, you know, rent us on Amazon anywhere. Uh, and then um, the Instagram is at Wild Eyed and Wicked. So it's an underscore, so, uh, you know, at Wild underscore, uh, at Wild underscore Eyed at, you know, uh, da, 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 at Wild Eyed and Wicked. You'll find us. And I'm uh, at GS.Foxwood. Beautiful. Great work. Very inspiring. Have fun promoting, have fun enjoying all the success, and I hope to see more work from both of you. Quite talented. Thank you so Thank much. You, and now Doctor. back to more Kate from the radio. Thank you, Doctor.